Hey, what's up, guys? Rich here. Brand new installment of My Take Radio's Beyond the Mic interview series is heading your way. Uh, my guests on this episode are going to be Anthony Frazier and James Lopez from The Fat Startup. Now, for those of you tuning in for the first time, My Take Radio's Beyond the Mic interview series focuses on talented and unique individuals outside of the podcasting and broadcasting world, and we're going to just bring them from our radar to yours. Time to boss up and step your game up if you're an entrepreneur. Our interview with the crew from The Fat Startup starts right now. What's going on, guys? Welcome to a brand new installment of My Take Radio's Beyond the Mic interview series. Uh, it's been a while since we've done an episode, but it, it was well worth the wait. This On this episode, we are joined by James and Anthony from The Fat Startup. Now, for those of you that aren't familiar, The Fat Startup is a, is a media company that offers different different types of content with a hip-hop flair for entrepreneurs. Now, don't don't let the, the, the modicum of hip-hop, you know, the moniker... Uh, kind of steer people away on the contrary it's some of the realest and most thorough advice out there it's better than any self-help book you go and pay $25 for on Amazon these guys are real they deliver a raw message and it's uncut and I am very fortunate to have them on so what's going on fellas Hey, before, yo! Before you before you start anything, James will agree with me. We're gonna record the the top of that show right there, <laughs> that part. <laughs> Everything you said is the first time we ever heard it said that way. Is ours. <laughs> not, it's not. It's not a problem. You know what? You know what the thing is. I've been wanting to talk with you guys because I follow one of the things I do. I have you know I have RSS feeds for for all the different things and for entrepreneurship. I only read you know like Ramit Sethi. Ryan Holiday, you know, the, I, you don't want to call them the bad boys of, of entrepreneurship, but the guys that are real with the stuff, because too many people wake up and they hear the term entrepreneur and they think, oh, I'm just going to come up with X product or X book or whatever, and I'm going to sit back and get paid. And they don't realize that before you can be successful, you got to suffer oh, yeah. for your brand. You have to bleed for your brand, and people don't want that. People want instant success. So I liked, you know, I was really happy to see such a fresh and refreshing take on it, and to utilize a medium that's pretty much embraced by our, you know, the younger generation. I want to say the under thirty club hmm. is is something that need there needs to be more of. We got way too many people that go to school don't don't learn the fun the fundamentals, and they think. They can create an app or they can create a book and they'll be paid for life. And that's not it. No, definitely not, man. Being being even named with, with in, in the same census as Ramit is, is an honor, dude. Like that is crazy. Well, the, re, the reason is because it's like I read I read Ramit's book, you know, and I'm and, and you know, my 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 story, you know, event one day I'll share it with you guys. It, it's it's very unique. So when I see a guy like that, that he that he has a, a pull no punches approach and He'll send you an email for for one of his classes, and he'll go, "Hey, you don't want to take this class? Whatever, the hell with you. St- yeah. ha- have fun being broke. Have fun not making money. I'm I'm good right now. You know what I'm doing? I'm sitting on a beach in Hawaii while you're reading a newsletter at, at your dead end job. Mm-hmm. Where where are you going wrong? And and those are the kind of questions that people need. You need that fresh perspective, and that's what I like that you guys do. Just straight to the point. It's you're not sugarcoating it. You're not hand holding anybody. It's like listen." You want to get paid. You want to. You want to hustle. You want to be noticed. There's mm-hmm. there's there's a certain set of criteria, a framework. Because you guys don't give rules. You give framework. Mm. Yeah. You know, there's no there's no there's no set recipe for success. There's a it's there's not. a there's a frame, like like exactly. a house. Your job here's the frame. Add the walls. Yep. That's you what you it. guys do. You get that's, it. Yeah, and that's perfect. That's a perfect explanation. I mean, that's you know, I, I think that's where we found our our calling, where a lot of people in our culture wanted to build that house but just didn't know how to build the frame portion of it you know what i mean how to get that going and how to put up the walls so we 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 like to say that we don't um we don't sell people dreams we sell them the steps that's right 
and, and make those dreams come true. And with and with that said, you know the, the the origins of the fat startup. Let's let's start there. How did you guys come together with the concept and and just the message and the overall direction? Oh, cool. Um, I guess I'll take that real quick. Eh? Uh, we we went we went to um, Anthony and I were actually talking through Twitter. You know, um, you mentioned earlier like how you'd like to uh, look for like clues, like success leaves clues or whatnot. Right. right. So at the time, Anthony was in California working on his um, on his startup. And I used to hit him up on Twitter and vice versa. And finally, when he came out here to New York City, we we linked up at a conference, you know, had a great chat about hip hop and business, you know, saw that we had a lot of things in common and looked at each other like, wow, there's, you know, there's more people like us out there. Um, And we we ended up uh, mentoring at a startup weekend. And at the startup weekend, we were teaching people about the lean mythology and talking to people about hip hop and business. And next thing you know, the fat startup was born. People wanted to learn more. They wanted a, a place, like a hub, for people that looked like us and spoke like us, you know, came from the culture, from the hip-hop culture. And that's and exactly it. We created pe- it. Pe- yeah. pe- people, are, people get scared of, of that. You know, they get scared of, of youth. They get scared of, you know, as, as, as stereotypical as it sounds, they get, they get scared of tattoos, minorities, and mm-hmm. the fact that, we don't, you know, some of us don't learn our words from a calendar every day that, yeah. that we that we come from a school that's a healthy mix of real life, maybe the streets and, you know, and with uh, an education mixed in, you know, it's a it's a it's a healthy mix that many of us are now, especially. And that's why I like to say the 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 under 30 generation is starting to appreciate, but it's mm-hmm. the over 30 generation that kind of was there, you know, the 80s and the 90s babies that they know it's like. Think about this. Any kid under 18 right now, right now doesn't know what it's like to go and buy potato chips and a quarter water. You know what's crazy? I was literally just, you know, it's so crazy in my mind. I literally was just sitting down thinking about that. That's like, right. Yo, like, yo, they would never know how far 2025 cent can exactly. go exactly in the summertime. <laughs> you you come from where we come from, man. It's that's crazy. right, and that's and that's the thing. You know, we we look at all this technology. You know, everybody thinks that spending two hundred dollars on an iPhone was <laughs> you know the end all be all. And it's like, yeah. did you know that you had to buy a Walkman, and if it had TV on it, you were a baller. What I you know? <laughs> you know, you had the big yellow Sony Walkman, and if it had auto reverse, you were ahead of the game. And these are the kind of things that I'm saying, like the under thirty demographic this is how they have to be approached well just a comment on that in particular right so it's it's like what you said success has no standards right that's right that's always been true since the beginning correct of forever you know but now it's becoming we, we used to live in a society where even though success had no standards our society did Yep, that's be right. Be successful. So it's like go to college, do this, or even when you build a business, write a business plan, do this, do that. And now the rules as the internet grew and as communication channels started to become way more accessible and information became way more accessible, um, people just started saying, wait, hold up. I don't need to do this. So that's we started right. realizing, not saying like that, not discovering, but just like realizing like this has always been this way. I could have been doing this since the beginning. If you think about lean methodology, it's not something that it's something that could be done back in the day. Like you can go back a million years and apply lean methodology to a, a, a business, whatever. So but it's more so that now people are start realizing that they don't have to do the old things anymore. So, you know, when a fast startup come into play. Now people are seeing that, hey, this is a different way to learn about entrepreneurship. And that's the way me and James and the rest of the team really, really want to approach it and just kind of give people that different aspect. And you mentioned like inspiration. You you know, we had a, a talk before you started the show about inspiration and, edu- you know, education and us kind of fusing the two together. That's right. So you get like the Tony Robbins and O'Reilly media together, like a mashup or something like that. That's you know, and, and we we don't, you know, to be honest with you, we didn't know this is really was going to go. When me and James got together, you know, when you talk about how we, we got together, the blog didn't start really the way it started off as a blog. You right. know, Tumblr, now we're Tumblr a media blog, company. A Tumblr blog that was just featuring our friends that liked hip hop and that were in technology. That's exactly. it. That's it. Exactly. So when you look at that, right, you look at how we started, James 
you know, and I started doing interviews and then we started doing more stuff and then more stuff. And then it just started building into what we see today. Um, so we never intended it to be what it is today, to be honest with you. Like we just started to see where the, the opportunities lie for us as we kept going. And then people like yourself started hitting me and James up and saying, yo, I like this or I like that. And of course, if you say you like it, we're going to give you more. <laughs> no, I mean, you know, what's funny about that. It's, it's the, you know, it's like, you ever heard of, of the, the term, the debt snowball? Yeah. Well, the debt, the debt snowball is where they tell you, oh, to pay down your debt, you start with your smallest debt, pay it off and then roll your money and it becomes a snowball and you apply that money to your, your second debt, your third debt until you're paid in full. Well, it, I always view success being the same way. It's, you know, you got to start with something small. You start with a nugget. And then your your job is to grow that, to make that become something bigger. And, you know, for you to say it started as a Tumblr blog and it's, you know, quote unquote, accidental success. It wasn't because the way I see it, you guys had an idea, you wanted to execute it and people believed in the message enough to motivate you guys to continue. They were in turn your, you know, they were in turn your snowball to create an yeah. avalanche. Everybody, yeah. you know, everybody that read it, everybody that shares it, everybody that talks about it, everybody that uses boss up they're 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 that, you know, they're your snowflake. They're your they're your snowball to create the avalanche. I mean, you know, you guys are onto something different. I mean, it turned into a it turned into a lifestyle, you know, That's and, it. Mm -hmm. and we, you know, our intentions were to to create a lifestyle, but it was a, a lifestyle of showing off everybody that's in our culture doing wonderful things. That's then it right. just took a, you know then it took a turn where people were saying hey you know I'm I'm cool like I love hip hop you know I love tech but I don't know how to put up a landing page and then that's where we saw another opportunity it was like all right it was cool to group everybody together now we got to provide more value than just grouping them together we got to educate them that's right because Ed they, they don't necessarily know the things that we know or that the world knows but they know that they should know it and they're part of the culture well, you know what? You know what's funny that when you're looking at at something like that and you're you're framing it that way, people also don't realize that a lot of the stuff that you that you're learning, you have to look towards outside sources to really master. Like hmm. we had a we I had a conversation with a colleague of mine, and I said, you know what's funny? You go to high school, they teach you algebra, trigonometry. You know, you learn earth science. You learn about the origins of of, of man, but you don't learn how to balance a checkbook. You don't learn how to fill out, you know, an application for, you know, you don't learn to fill out a W-4. You don't learn to fill, you know, you don't learn how to balance things. You don't learn what, you know, what you have to do to get a mortgage or about interest rates. Like none of the, none of the real world survival skills are accessible to you until you walk out the door of, of high school, you know, mm. for, as an example. You don't learn that, you, you know, you know how many people they'll say, I don't know how to do that. Or <laughs> like, like what you just said about a landing page. Everybody can go on the net. You, you know, somebody knows how to take a selfie, but they can't <laughs> learn HTML. You know, like, like that kind of logic. And, it's, and, the, and the crazy part is the tools are out there. It's like, you mean to tell yeah. me you can't go to Code Academy and learn a, a little HTML, even the bare minimum. But, you know, you're, you're mad because you got to pay $500 for, for, for a pair of kicks. It's like the only way you're going to get that $500 and not sweat paying it is if you work to, to make that money a drop in the bucket for you. Uh, and even when you start making the money, like you don't even want to touch it anymore. Nope. You don't even like, want to touch what? it. Yeah. It's like, yo, you know what? I, I got better things to do. I could, I could try out a Facebook ad. I could, you know, hit up an event that I really want to speak at. Like there's so much you could, more you could do with your cash. Yep. I mean, investment, pretty right. much an investment in yourself, you know, like, oh. That's right. You know, I agree. That's really what we all about, self investment over here, you know. So, uh, and we, and we try to make things. We try to make materials that make people feel like they're investing in themselves, but just by, you know, messing with us. So we have courses that we're going to be dropping. Um, you know, late spring, you're going to start to see like, uh, you know, a learning site where you see courses from the fast startup. You know, when you when you see the videos on our site, the free interviews we drop almost every other week. When you see the the blog post that we drop two times a week, yep. this is all stuff that we feel like, hey, if you're gonna spend time on us, we want to make sure there's an ROI, whether you whether you spent money or spent five minutes, yep. you know. There there's an there's a you know there's a risk and a return in everything that's done. 
the risk for the per- the risk for the person that visits the site is the risk of becoming enlightened and the payoff is becoming better at what you do that's yeah. it you got to yeah. risk you got to risk somewhere i mean you know one of one of the guys that and, and it was funny when i saw that you interviewed him was uh, what you interviewed him was jason calacanis mm-hmm. and um you know the funny thing is uh, uh, uh one of the guys that writes for the site who i'm friends with he was he was my best man at my wedding he was like hey you ever heard of jason calacanis and i I was like, yeah, I've heard of him a little bit. He's a, I'm like, he's very, very outspoken and he gets a lot of hate for it. Oh, and, hell he, yeah. and he was like, yeah, that guy, he goes, you should listen to his stuff because you'd like it. And I'm like, yeah. And I did, you know, but it's funny because what I ended up taking out of that guy, out of listening to some of the, the interviews and things that he did was the fact that if you believe in what you're, you're selling anyone, you shouldn't change your message. Yeah. Period. Yeah. You know, if, if you believe in something hard enough and you want the world to to either become enlightened or even to to change their view on something, you got to you got to deliver it, even if sometimes you got to deliver it with a sledgehammer. Yeah. And I mean, that, it's all an art. Like Anthony wrote a post um, called the, the Art of Not Giving a Fuck. Yep. And that that post is Jason Calacanis to a T. Yep. I, lo- I, I read that post and it was funny because I it's a it's a mantra I live by. Like I, like I said, it's it's one of those things where, you know, I like I told you guys before we we started recording. It's like you know I do a show, I do a show from eleven from you know eleven to two, and if somebody if somebody online, whether they're a colleague or somebody who does another show, and they say something, occasionally I got to throw them under the bus. It, it, some sometimes I don't name the I don't name names, but I got to go. You know, this guy hit me up about this, this, and this, <laughs> and you know, oh, you know, come on my network. And, you know, we could grow together. And I'm looking at the dude and I'm like, dude, you, you, you're, you post once a week. I post like every, every day. Like, I mean, it, 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 it goes back to, to what this dude Chuck Creekmore told us one time, which is, you know, when, when people come to you and they tell you, yo, let, let's build or let's network. What they're really saying is, hey, you know, do the work for me, man. Yep. Like, yo, it's so it, it, Let me it is that. You. Do, the, do the work for me. And then the funny thing is when you approach anyone, it's not about you know, do the work for me. It should be, what can I do for you? I think more people have trouble networking because yeah. they approach it as you're going to do this for me. Yeah. It's, it should be the exact opposite. If it's somebody who's especially more successful than you mm-hmm. and you see that something's wrong with their brand, their site, don't approach them like, Hey man, I'd like it for you to do this. You'd be like, Hey, you know, I noticed on your site, your code is a little off. Listen, I'm good at coding uh, at coding. I'm a big fan. If you don't mind, you know, I'd like to fix that for you. Yeah. And you just you know, open the door. You just kind of you you open the crack in the door, and then it's your job to kick the door down afterwards. Exactly. You know, it's crazy. I actually put out a quote. I feel so strong about it. It's actually going to be part of my next post. And I said that we live in the we live in the age of the uh, we have our generation is the most ambitious, but also the most laziest generation yep. Yep. ever. Because it seems like everybody wants it. There's even studies that came out. There's like actual studies saying that, you know, pe- our people want it so bad. Like our, our generation wants it so bad. We want to be entrepreneurs. We want to go make things for ourselves. We want to make our own destiny. But, yo, it seems like nobody wants to put the work in to do it. Because you know? it. it's, that, it's hard. Because it's hard. You know, it's hard work. And that's, you know, that that's where we come in and, and try to like simplify. make it a little simpler. Yeah, by giving you a framework or, you know, by, by people just seeing our moves. Like we, you know, we're not perfect. Like yep. sometimes we do things that, that to others might not make sense. To us it makes sense at the moment. And then the numbers show that we were completely off track. But it's okay. It's okay if people see that because then they'll say, yo, that person acts like me. They look like me. They failed. Yo, I could do it too. That's like, it. it. You know, they made it. <laughs> you know, they could call us whatever. They could be like, yo, they, they cornballs, man. They failed. Yeah, well. Yo, but we, but we tried. You know what I mean? And that's that, it. when you try, sometimes it leads to better things. And that's, you know, that's what happened with the Fast Starter. You know, from a Tumblr site to not necessarily failing you know, it, the Tumblr site wasn't a failed attempt. It was just that we saw we could do even more because people started gravitating to it. Well, so, you know, you, you, know, you just keep it moving. No, well, I, the, here's here's the the funny thing, and and I want to ask about this because it it's gonna it's a two it's a two fold question, and mm-hmm. it's you're interviewing so many successful people. I mean, your your RZA interview was great, and um, yeah. you know it, what's funny about it is that 
the, one of the first excuses you hear is, Hey man, I don't approach that person because I'm afraid I'll, I'll sound terrible or I won't come off right. Or I won't be able to, to convince them to do an interview or to answer a question for me. When mm -hmm. you guys were, were starting out and as you started to, to interview more people, how did you guys start overcoming those obstacles? Mm -hmm. Oh man. I mean, uh, for, for me, it was more that, uh, Every time those obstacles presented themselves, like I would make it over, right? So I did. I just didn't care anymore. Like I had nothing to lose. Right. Like all right, I'm gonna hit up. I'm gonna hit up Gary Vaynerchuk. I'm gonna hit up, you know, Jason Calacanis. If they tell me no, yo, it doesn't hurt me. And then nope. tomorrow I'm gonna try all over again. So after a while, it was just you know I became immune to the pain. I guess. That's a like, good way through it. it. You know, I got I got nothing to lose. I mean, you know, it's, it's like you hit rock bottom. Yeah. Another thing that. That um, and we talk about this in the course. I'm gonna. T it's so funny. Everything we're talking about today is definitely gonna be on our post. So, um, but it's all about the value, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, usually when you look at it's two, it's twofold, right? So, first of all, like James said, you know, these people are normal. They bleed like us. When you scratch them, they got blood in them. Whatever. Right. So we don't really look at anybody as being better than us. That's that's just number one. But then number two is that we feel like we bring in something to the table. So when we interview someone, we're interviewing. We're not asking you, yo, take out 10 minutes of your time and you get nothing back from it. Right. Your conversation with us will be shared with thousands of people. Right. You know, you're going to not only benefit us, you're going to benefit all the people who follow us, you know, and all the people who will follow us in the future, which gives you a direct return because they're going to look you up and they're going to look up everything you're doing and try to, you know, buy a product that you're selling. Right. So it, it's, it's almost like we put them on the pedestal. We give them an honor. When you ask to interview someone, that's an honor. You right. know, like, I'm honored if somebody came to me and said, hey, can I interview you? I was honored when you asked us. That's an honor. Well, I appreciate that. So, and, and look where we at. We're here. Oh, you, you know, know so my, you know, my thing is like, yo, you just you you throw out those honors, man, and and, and you know, and people are gonna feel like, hey, you know, it's an interview. I, I get something out of it. And look, if if it doesn't work, like Jane said, you know, well, you know, I start all over again. But it's all about bringing that value. Oh, and and also also the other thing is like with when we bring we bring them more than just the eyeballs of our community. Like we bring them a genuine sense of being part of the community. Like, That's right. When, you know, when Gary Vaynerchuk is sitting on the, in, in the stage telling people, hey, you know, the 10 people that didn't know me before, fuck you, it's because he feels comfortable. That's right. You know what I mean? It's not like we got him stuck up in a corner, like, <laughs> pressing him, telling him, yo, give us all the gems, give us all your answers. Nope. No, he feels comfortable, so he feels that he could talk to us the way he would talk to his friends. So now that that's something that that a lot of people in press or a lot yeah. of people in the tech scene don't get to see. Yo. They're not used to that. They're used to the same, right. same thing over and over again. Wait till you see the and wait. And speaking of what James said, wait till you see the Ben Horowitz video, because I've been telling everybody, everybody I know, Ben Horowitz has never, ever, 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 ever did an interview like that where he was that candid. Never. never. I we and James can co-sign this. We've seen a whole bunch of Ben Hall with stuff. Never, 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 never spoke like that. So people are going to start to realize the magic that we bring to the stage, especially when that video comes out. Oh, that's I'll awesome. Make sure to send me the links for that because I'll make sure to share it on my end also. Oh, for sure, for sure. Yeah. We're, we're going we're gonna to pump it out in the next uh, 20 to 30 days. We're going to make people sounds wait a little good. bit more. <laughs> no, it sounds good. I mean, you know, with you guys talking about it and speaking so freely about it, you know, the, the mantra I always live by is what I like to call the three B's. If you breathe, bleed, and breed like I do, I'm, you're no better than I am. Hmm. You know what I mean? And the, way I, right. and the way I see that is if you're going to approach somebody, it, what exactly that? Hey, you know, if you get a chance, can I interview you? No, no problem. Okay, then. And you move. The, the only time that, I, that I've ever gotten... Where, where somebody's a refusal has gotten under my skin was I reached out once to to Cliffy B. I'm sure you know who this is. And, yes. And um, he responded. And, you know, I, I was like, I was just starting to do the live shows. And I was like, hey, you know, I'd love to talk to you. Da, 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 da. And he he gave me like a real uh, he tried to big time me, you know, like, <laughs> oh, yeah, like, nah. But but in a real like. 
I don't even want to say a douchey way because whatever, everybody's entitled to a bad day, but it was on a mm-hmm. real big time grind. And I was mm-hmm. just like, okay, I'm like, dude, you were me once. Yeah. You know, you may have been in Nintendo power. You may have done all that, but I'm sure somebody took your lunch money once in your life. <laughs> you know, I'm sure, I'm sure somebody slapped you around once in your life. And if they yes. haven't, it's, it, it, it's just because you haven't got to that, to that point in the, in your journey yet. So, you know, it was funny because it got under my skin, but then I, I just, I went on air and I was like, hey man, you know, I, I approached this dude, he pretty much did this and this and this, and I said it verbatim, and it was funny because my audience responded and they were just like, man, I can't believe that, da 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 and I was like, yeah, that's that's how it went, and I didn't, I didn't harp on it, but it was funny to me because I was like, wow, I really found, it, it validated what I was doing on air because my audience was like, yo man, the hell with that guy, it's it's bullshit and and it, it felt good and that's that's you know it mm-hmm. makes it worthwhile you know those small victories like I was saying. Oh man, I I man, I, I still have days sometimes when I'll send out an email to somebody and they'll you know they'll say no. Um, they might not say it in a mean way, but right? They'll say they'll say no to me and and I, I still you know sometimes I I still feel a certain way about yeah, it. You get a little but tight. Then, <laughs> yeah, but then you know what what I do to remind myself is. You know, I, I go back to the to the interview tab of our site and I'll be like, hey, you know, I, I wanted to interview this person. They said no, but we were able to sit down with a Gary or yep. with a Evo Springsteen. Like, yo, I didn't fail. That's that, it. that one no just means that maybe later on they'll be they'll be on our side. You know what I mean? It's just somebody else I got to prove yeah. um, differently. You know, I treat them like oh. my parents. It's like, yo, my parents believe in me, but they're not, you know, they're going to support me, but they still think I'm crazy. So it's like, yo, you know, I'm going to have somebody that I got to. Uh, change their mind <laughs> all the time. You know what I mean? Like, there's always going to be somebody I have to work on. That's yeah. right. It's all good. They tell you me. Know, no. the, and to be honest with you, one thing I always say, and I learned from, I don't even know who I learned this from, man, but I know it's like popular in the sales, in the sales circles, is get to the no fast. Yeah, yep. man. You know what I mean? Like, yo, like, don't, don't make me wait on the no. Mm-hmm. Like, if it's no, I want it, I want it that quick. Yep. Like, don't, don't do it don't, don't sugarcoat don't, the no. Yeah, just say don't no. Don't sugarcoat it. You know, don't. You know what I mean? You, you know, so it's just get to the no fast, and you, and and that's a mantra you can you can use even when you're talking to girls, man. Yep. Get to the no. <laughs> no, and, and and it's it's an interesting way to look at that because that that always goes back to the same thing. It's like, listen, if if you're trying to talk to somebody and they're and they're more successful than you, they were better off than you, and they say no, your job at that point is to get better to get on their radar so that they can mm-hmm. reproach you and be like, Hey, you know, I'd love to come on your show sometime. And then you uh-huh. can turn about as fair play. And you just say to yourself, ah, look at that now, you know, look at you, mm-hmm. you, you, you yeah. gave me a no, you know, three years ago. And here you are asking me, can you, can yeah. you come on my platform to deliver your message? <laughs> everything, everything is in cycles. And I always feel that every no eventually becomes a yes. And if it does remain a no, there better be a damn good reason for it. Yo, you know what's yeah, funny? I, Somebody yeah. was supposed to introduce um, us to Ben Horowitz a while ago. Right. All the time ago. You know what I mean? <laughs> a while ago, like, I approached somebody that I know, and I got respect for this person, so there's no diss, but, you know, I, I approached somebody I knew, and I said, hey, man, can we get a can we get an introduction to Ben Horowitz? And, you know, it was kind of reluctant. You know, to really do that, mm-hmm. you know, and use their, use their whatever, yep, their I don't pull. know, whatever they felt like they didn't, they didn't want to use it on me and our uh, brand. Um, so when the Ben Horowitz event actually went down, you know, that person hit me up and said, yeah, I see you got Ben Horowitz. Yep. And <laughs> damn I right like, I did. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we did. And I think, I think if anything that, that might've gained a little bit of respect from him. I think there's a lot of people who probably look at the fast startup and maybe even still kind of underestimate what we do. Um, but we don't care. You know, at the at the end of the day, when you see deals like Dr. Dre, you know, doing with Apple and you see, yep. you know, all these like groundbreaking deals from not so typical entrepreneurs, you start to see how fast startup is being validated in the marketplace every day. You know, so I just think that the Apple, you know, beats thing validates us and. I don't really care what anybody says about us. I mean, I know entrepreneur is the same thing. Entrepreneur, normalism. I don't know how they say that. What well, James always uses, he always writes it. Uh, <laughs> well, you know, entrepreneurism. Yeah. So that whole the whole scheme of that, right? It's, it's we all share the same struggles. We all get the nose. We yep. all get the, you know. It's just all about how you deal with it. You That's know, right. And, 
you learn, um, you become thinking, better. Yeah, we become better. Listen and listen to the interview we did with Ryan Holiday. Um, oh yeah, Ryan Holiday. I, it's funny. I've come across him from from a few different things. I have him on an RSS for his site, and um, I believe the last post I read was about his losing his engagement ring. Okay, and, yeah. and and, pro- and proposing to to his girlfriend, and it was it was funny. I believe I I. I I commented on that. So, you know, it, it, it's funny. The, the Ryan Hall, I didn't even know you guys had interviewed him, too. He's made the circles. You know, I, I, he, Tim Ferriss is a guy I listen to. I saw he popped up on Tim Ferriss. Oh, we're going to get him. Oh, we're going to get him. Yeah. Oh, Tim Ferriss is ridiculous. Yo, here, here, here's something I'll reveal on your podcast, man. Nobody knows this. James knows this, but nobody knows this. Tim Ferriss is the reason I lost 100 pounds, man. That's so, fantastic. Let me let me guess um, uh, the... Um, Five hour, five hour book. Yeah, the four hour, four hour body. Four hour body, because he did, yeah. he did, he did. Um, the four hour body is an amazing book. It is, it is a tremendous book. I, I've, I have a digital version. And I've given it to people. I'm like, look, read this. You know, Bro, if you got a digital version of a 600 page book, yeah, yeah I got all it. Right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'll send, I'll send it to you. <laughs> no, but, um, I don't want it. <laughs> oh, okay. No, well, you know, it's just. Well, I'm just. You know what it is for me. It's so huge, I, isn't it? It well, you know what it is when you when you're when you're scrolling on a on a tablet, it's just like click 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 click. And the okay. funny the funny thing is when when he introed that book, he was like, you don't have to read this book in order. No, you don't. So nope. so that's what I ended up doing. Like I used to tell people about like the diet portion because this is yeah. you know I, you know I'm a, I'm a gym rat. I, I go to the I've been going to the gym and working out since I was 14, and it's like, oh, how do I do this? How do I do that? I'm like, first rule, stop being a fat ass. And if you're gonna be <laughs> if you're gonna be a fat ass, at least put in the work on the back end like 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 me it's like it's like yo i'm not chiseled out of granite but you know what i wanted to make sure i was strong enough that if i had to help around the house i could pick up my refrigerator for my mother to clean up underneath it or or carry a couch in from inside Mm. or or bring in all her groceries if she couldn't carry it i was all about functional strength so Mm. you know a lot of a lot of the stuff a lot of the principles he applied and a lot of the hacking not only physical but mental even even with the you know with the with the four-hour work week which, which I love. I, you know, I live by, by a ton of those principles. It's like you, you got to work smarter, not harder. And that just applies to everything. And people just don't get it. They want the, they want the miracle pill. Like I I used to hate that. Yo man, what do you, what, you know, what are you supplementing with? Uh, water, a lot (laughs) lot of food, uh, the, the occasional, you know, not eating dinner one night or a salad for dinner. It's like, don't get me Mm -hmm. wrong. If I want to go and have a burger from Johnny Rockets and a milkshake, on my lunch break, my ass better come home and eat a salad yeah. <laughs> when I get yeah. home. But like, they, like everybody wants like this instant recipe for success. So to hear that you guys are getting Tim Ferriss, that is a that 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 is going to be a tremendous interview, tremendous because that guy he he has so many different tools. And if you don't come away from that smarter, then mm. you just don't want to be better. And, and you know, he has a podcast by the way yep. too. Yep. Um, Ryan Holiday was on it. Started. He was yeah, a- yeah. He just started it. I definitely suggest people go check out that podcast as well as you know the one you're listening to, of course. Thank you. Um, and you know, and there's a lot of Scott Britton, who's another guy that James interviewed. Right. Um, he has a wonderful podcast as well. I'm a big fan of that podcast. There's a lot of gems out there, man. Start watching TV. Start turning on my take radio, man. <laughs> Thank you. You gotta, you know, if you if you gotta read one, uh, Renegade Radio with Jason Ferruja is really good. He um, okay, wow. He's a he's a he's a weight he's a, a serious weightlifting coach, but the the his approach to like life, dieting, training, it's great. He actually interviewed Ryan Holiday on his seventh episode that I think came out uh, last Wednesday. And this guy, another another dude, he he approaches it no filter, no oh you know you gotta you gotta go and weigh yourself and you need a, a support system. No, he's just like this is what you gotta do, hit the iron, don't eat like shit, and that's it. <laughs> you know, like 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 go in there, do what you gotta do, but do it smart and do it effectively. Yeah, so, push forward. That's it. Well, one thing one thing I've been wanting to ask and and this is something that i know that you guys i've I've seen you guys do it and put your events together and we were i I believe i actually tweeted this to james about people they they you tell them about an event then oh i'm sorry i missed it man next time or (laughs) or whatever and and we had a we had a a, a, we exchanged a few tweets about it how do you how do you guys feel 
about that. Like your mantra, you eat, sleep, and and breathe just entrepreneurship, being being successful on your own terms. And you see these people that you kind of feel, not that they're wa- they're wasted potential, but that they they just need that push and they don't they don't maximize it. You know, like the guy that would rather go and get bottle service at the club, but you tell him to read this book, and he'll say, Nah, man, I want twenty five dollars for a book. But that'll oh, yeah. be the the same guy that'll buy bottle service, you know, at the club. Mm. Oh, I, I I I mean, I argue with my friends all the time, especially the ones the, the sneakerheads. Yep. Because they're always like, yo, you know, I, I want to build this, I want to build that, or you know, I I need to come to your event so I can learn. And I'm like, mm-hmm. yo, show up, man! Like you get one day a month to sit down with yep. fifty plus, you know, like minded individuals. Where now it's easy for you because I can introduce you. That's right. Like I could say, yo, this is my personal friend right here. You know that that it, it actually helps, right? And it's like, yo, you can't take that one day, but you could take three days out the month to go party till six o'clock in the morning and spend all your money. Like that just doesn't make sense. So it's it's very hard to overcome that, man. Like like yeah. people that tell me all the time, like, yo, I missed the event, you know, why didn't you tell me? It's like, yo, dude, are you crazy? <laughs> like I wanna I wanna pull through the computer, like, are you no, nuts? Like I'm supposed job. to tell you? <laughs> well, <laughs> like what about what about yo James? Yo, you you know, I know you did a hard job getting these people together. I apologize. I missed it. I'm not going to miss the next one. Yep. And that's how it goes. Don't blame it on me. Don't blame it on me now. (laughs) That's it. And and it's like, I hit you up. I hit you guys. I I believe it was you, James. And I said, man, I've been trying to get out to an event, but you know, I work, I work in Long Island. By the time I get out, I can't get out there. That doesn't mean I don't value what you guys are doing. But I I just let you know, like, Hey, I, I, I see you. You know what I mean? I see you. And I, and I want, and I want to see that in person, but this is, this is it. And it's like, I, it's like don't reach out with an excuse. Just be like, "Hey, I couldn't do it." Yeah, well, that's you know, better. I'd rather that. I'd rather that. I'll, I'll, I'll take it beyond just the event, real quick, and say, you know, even with our products or anything that we do in general, what I've learned over time, especially being an entrepreneur, you know, for for a few years now, man, is that you can't save everybody. Nope, you can't. And you and and the thing is, like, we care. You know what I mean? Like people like James, people like myself, people like yourself. We care I can too hear much. It. Like we care, and the thing is, we should care. Not saying that we sh- we shouldn't, right. but the thing is, like we there are people who are gonna gravitate towards us, and those are the people we have to care about the most. That's right. You know, and the people who don't gravitate, we when we spend our energy on them, we actually do a disservice to ourselves. That's right. You know, so we can't really. We can't really put the energy on people like we can tell somebody, but we can't spend, you know, like like you like James said, you know, somebody emailed them like, why are you tell me like, yo, it's not my job to make sure that you on your grind. It's your job to make sure that you on your grind. And the, and, the, and and the fact that they don't realize that is not a problem that you can solve. That's right. You know what I mean? And you just got to back away from it at some point because I can't solve that problem for that man. You know, if he don't realize that he's in control of his own destiny and his own effort is the result is going to give him the results he he searches for, then, you know, he's definitely not going to get it from us, no matter how hard we try. Yep, that's, so, what, that's what happens. It's like it's, you, you tell him, you're like, listen, you have this potential. You're, you, you can be better. You can make more money. It's funny that, James, you bring up um, sneakerheads because, you know, I love mm. I love my sneakers. I, I love <laughs> I love going. But here here's the funny thing. You're not going to catch me camping out for a pair of sneakers. You're not going to catch me, you know, selling, not paying my light bill because I need these sneakers. You're not going to see me have a refrigerator full of condiments, but yet have a pair of $500 sneakers. You want to know why? Because even if you have them, their value depreciates and they add nothing. So what? Uh, you look fresh for one day. But yeah, but what deal. happens? What happens when the shoes get scuffed? What happens when people don't start don't start you know they don't continue wearing them like they should or or it goes in cycles? Guess what you just did? You spent money, you spent time, you spent energy for somebody else to profit off of you. It's still it's still you know and it's still really hard for me. Like like I, I want to see everybody win, man. Like That's even right. you know even my worst enemy. Like I want to see you win, and sometimes I get caught up where where I'm more worried about somebody's business than they are. And that's where that's when having a good team comes into play because that's when Anthony will come in and be like, "Yo James, like I get it. You want this person to win, but they're not letting them. You know, yep. you're not they're not letting you help them and they're not out there to win themselves." So yep. 
you got to take care of the people that actually care. And it's always hard for me to step back. But then I always know that I have somebody like Ant telling me, yo, mind your business. That's, That's the right. business you got to mind. You know what I mean? Well, it's funny because um, I commented on a post that, that, that Jade put out about talking too much. You know, being bad <laughs> yeah. for your business. I Shout commented on Jade, man. <laughs> Yeah, I, I commented on that because you know what's funny? It's like you can you can tell everybody every rec- every tool for success, every recipe for success. But you know what? Even even subconsciously, you're not telling them everything because you want them to find it for themselves. Even your closest friends, you'll be like, "Listen, go take this class, go do this." But you're not gonna tell them, "Hey, in order for you to take that class, you know, you gotta you gotta make sure." you buy the book or you got to make sure you buy this or you got to make sure you, you're not going to tell them that because you want those people to enrich their enrich themselves through a little work. You know what I mean? You're just giving them like we were saying the framework. Yeah. And that's what happens when you, you, you know, that, that post, it resonated so much because sometimes, you know, a guy that ran a show, he reached out to me. He's like, Hey man, um, I wanted to know how you got your show on stitcher as an example and i was like all right i'm like listen just just go to their site <laughs> yeah, the, the, the information oh man you know why is it whenever i ask you a question you never just give me the straight answer and i was like oh. because the an- yeah th- this was verbatim what i got and i said I'm, I'm like dude it's on the site like like you know it's not even me holding you back from acquiring the information it's like i'm i'm giving you the breadcrumb how do i get on stitcher i'm like well go to the site your response at that point should be like oh yeah i'll check it out and then if you if you go on the site and you go hey man i checked this tab this tab and this tab and i didn't find it am i missing something i'll be like oh you had to go here but don't like that's what i'm saying about you know with with that it's like you give up too much and and people don't learn anything and I mean, then they that, just think you're holding back, and you're not. And they, and it's strange relationships too, because yep. you know I, I wrote a post about maintaining relationships, and I deal with the same thing you just you just said. Like yep. I, I was with a friend today having lunch um, with my kids, and he's telling me, "Hey, you know, I want to start a ABC," and I'm like, "Dude, you've been telling me that for the past like yep. four months. Like, what's good?" And he's like, "Yeah, you know, I I want to do this. I want to do that. You know, how should I go about doing it?" And I'm like, "Yo, I tell you all the time, Google is your best friend." Right. Like there's so much content out there. When you come to me, come to me with something that you couldn't find yourself. Because if you keep giving me things that I know you could find, I'm not, I don't want to help you anymore. Because I know you're not going to do it anyway. So you're wasting my time. And, you know, as an entrepreneur, like your time is your, your biggest asset. And, and it sucks to have people come at you with, with things that they could kind of figure out themselves. Like the world is there, man. You know, if you go out there and look for it, you'll find all the answers that you need. Yeah, and then you could come to me with something a little bit harder. You know, like I didn't understand this. Then I could break it down. No, when you wrote when you wrote the um, you know, the the post about being mindful of haters, I, you know, I shared I I commented on that. And I'm like, this is what happens all the time. It's like people people don't want to be a, an instrument of your success, but they'll they'll jump to to be an, an instrument of, of your downfall. Oh yeah. Like nobody, nobody, nobody's hungry enough to to say, "Hey, man, you know, uh, wh- how's this working out? I want to get involved. Listen, I'm gonna put in half the money, or I'm gonna put in mm-hmm. whatever. I'm or or listen, oh, you go into an event. Listen, let's go half on 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 a ticket, and uh, you know, half and half, and you go one day, I go another day. No, it's it's exactly that. And then you know, they go, "Yo, man, that dude." He, he don't want to give him no information. He's a tight ass or whatever. It, it, and and this I'm going to share with Anthony also because he, he might be aware of this. I, I cover, you know, I try to go to a lot of gaming events mm-hmm. at, here in here in New York City. And I try to, I get to where I get to and do, do, I, I come in, I cover the event. The event is over. I go home. Dudes are like, oh man, you leaving, you in and out. I'm like, yeah, man, I, this is a job for me. <laughs> you know, I'm not, you know, like, like I live. Yeah, I live with what they call I, you know, the 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 joke term for it is like the straight edge lifestyle. I don't drink, yeah. I don't smoke, I don't do anything. So, I, you know, I I can't go and sit with you in a bar, and and, and get bent because I don't drink. So it's a waste yeah. of my time. It's like I go in, I get the information I gotta get, and mm. I leave. <laughs> like, well, like one what, thing I, I'll see. The thing is, you know what? It's nothing wrong with that. One thing that has gotten me as far as I gotten is just having a value system and just sticking with it. That's it. And and basically a lot of people may, you know, I got called the square a lot of times, man. I got called yep. a cornball, a square. 
And sometimes, yo, I, I just live with it, you know, because I know what got me where I'm at. You know what I mean? So I don't really care. You know, like I know what worked. I know what didn't work. That's right. And, and you know, a lot of those people who were doing a lot of that stuff, they still where they at. That's it. You know, there's no progress. There's no, there's no none of that. You know, it's just like, I mean, you know, we joke all the time, you know, but, but there's a time to work and there's a time to play. And there's dudes who... You know, who went, who went to a lot of those game conferences and all they focused on was like, you know, trying to get ass or trying to do, you know, or trying to go out to the, the E3 parties and yep. stuff like that. I was just never really, I wasn't really too fascinated with that. I, I like nope. having a good time, but it's just like, yo, I just know what works for me. That's you know, it. it's not, if you can do all that and still make it popping, yo, that's what's up. That's right. But that's... I, I know what I got to do and you should respect that. That's all. Absolutely. Now, now with that said, and this, this was the, you know a, a lead into this question looking looking at where you guys have have got thus far do you feel that being so connected now is something that is both a gift and a curse to growing your business <laughs> I, I mean let, let me let me grab that real quick. <laughs> I, mean, I think i think you know i, I put up a picture the other day where i said um or a tweet or something where i said you know you, you know you should focus on being your own connect that's right um, you know, we've we've made a lot of good friends, a lot of high powered friends throughout the year, year and a half. Um, but it don't really mean nothing, man. That's right. Like, you know, all of these people are cool. They cool to ask questions, but they have their own businesses to run. That's so, right. You know, having these connects don't mean that we could go up to them and be like, hey, Gary, you know, you have a million followers. Can you tweet out? It's my birthday. You know what yep. I mean? Like, can you can you tell people to follow me? Like, it's not going to happen. Yep. They really don't care. Now, the, the bad part about it is that we have a lot of friends that'll come to us now and you know they might have hated in the beginning or they might have not shown support or, or maybe they did show support but now everybody feels like they're entitled to a connection to one of our connects yep that it's sense like, yo, of entitlement said, is a killer yeah. like, I, <laughs> like the, the day i interviewed ben horowitz um the day we interviewed ben horowitz i i, I personally received a, a, you know like over 10 15 emails people telling me yo i always love ben i would love to connect with him hook it up <laughs> <laughs> and I'm looking at the names, and I'm like, yo, some of these people are my friends. They should know better. Yep. But then it's LinkedIn and a pitch. Friends. Yeah, <laughs> like I was getting everything. I was getting pitch decks, everything. I'm like, yo, come on, man. Like I was happy a couple of days ago, and I could actually go through my email. Like yep. now I can't even do my email anymore. <laughs> like it's almost like we're gonna have to hire a virtual assistant just to handle our emails. I'll um I'll attack another end of that problem where it's not necessarily too much connects. It may be too much information. Yep, information yeah. overload. And, yeah, and and you know, out there in the world, there's so much. You know, and fast order could be contributing to your information overload. You know, I also society. You know, but yeah. but basically, it's 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 a lot of information, and and we have a lot of different ways. The the great so this I, I spoke on a panel recently about the fast startup. You know, about talking about how we kind of grew. And one thing I, I highlighted was that we've grown a brand um, that's so monumental in the sense of like people feeling ownership to it that some people don't even know what we sell. Right. Like, but they're a part of it. They bought T-shirts. They claim boss up. They tweet us articles. They retweet stuff from our newsletters. Yep. But yet they couldn't tell you what we sell. Well, <laughs> well you know what's and, funny about and, that? Go ahead. So you sell in a mission before you sell a product, right? right? So that's kind of been how we, you know, been able to kind of like keep the information away from people, try to make it seem like they're, they're owning something and we don't have to like throw them a lot of information out there and keep it all in, you know, keep it like, like we talked about earlier, like the good mix. Right. Um, because there is information overload. And, Absolutely. And, you know, that's something that we deal with. Um, and we have, as we figured out where we wanted to go, we were still selling that mission. Makes sense. You know, and not really selling a product. We're selling a mission. And people still tacked on. Now that we know what our products are, people following the Yellow Book Road. <laughs> so, yeah, but I think I think I think to you know a testament to like what Anthony was saying about selling the mission. Um, I think when we started, that was that was the whole plan anyway. Like the whole plan wasn't wasn't to sell people products to get that mission going. It was to encourage people to to partake in the mission. That's right. You know, to let them know that yo, you can do this too. Mm -hmm. Then we saw that hey, 
this could be a legit business and we could make some money while actually helping people instead of helping people and not having money to turn on the lights, you know, mm -hmm. to keep the lights on. So then we, we got a little bit more product focused because now we knew. We knew the mission, but people would also tell us what they needed to fulfill that mission. And, and we could provide that. The, val the value is there. I mean, you know, people, people don't understand that, you know, it's it, – and it's funny because I, I think one of you guys shared this about, um, you know, a, it taking X amount of time to build a Toyota and X amount of months to build a Rolls Royce. <laughs> and, yeah. yep, and I shared, I shared that picture on – my, my personal Facebook because I was telling people, you know, I, I, I started doing this in 2006 and I got burned out because I was doing shows, you know, for hours and hours and hours and I wasn't seeing it growing and I got, you know, I got burned out. So I said to myself in, in 2009, I saw that, you know, you could do the shows live and all this stuff. I said, maybe I need a live audience. Maybe I need to, 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 to redo it, but get feedback to continue and, you know, I started and then one show turned to two shows, an hour turned to two hours before, you know, I was doing three hours and people, people were tuning in and, you know, you get your first email. Hey, man, I'm in such and such country and I listen to it and it's awesome. And I said to myself, you know what? I'm not going to change what I do. People who people email me, oh, you know, why don't you do this segment of the show first? I'm like, nope, this is the way it's going to be. You don't like it. Don't listen. Like, you know, and, and it's funny because, um, you know, uh, Tim Ferriss and a couple other guys, they, sometimes they say it. Sometimes you got to fire your supporters, Yeah. you know, because it's like you, you want all this change, but we set up a Patreon campaign or we set up this or, you know, we're doing a, a charity event or whatever, but we don't hear a peep out of you. But the show's not uploaded the day you want. Oh, what the hell, you guys? The new show's not up yet. And I'm like, listen. <laughs> it, 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 I, I'm worrying about building this long term, not short term. I mean, the greatest quote is a, a, a quote that maybe you guys are familiar with from from Bruce Lee, where he was like, I don't fear the man that knows 10,000 kicks. I fear the man that's practiced one kick 10,000 times. <laughs> and it's true. I'd rather I'd rather do the shows and, and run my brand and my site my way and let the success get there eventually than cut corners uh, reinvent myself or or lose sight of what I am to for the sake of, of of the quick buck you'll get there like people don't understand that you know and that's one thing I like that you guys you guys really push it's like listen you're not it's not overnight there's a lot Thank of blood sweat and tears that go into this I mean you know I saw that you guys had interviewed John Lee Dumas and it, and he um he popped up on a you know I listened to a lot of shows about podcasting and he popped up on a show and everybody's like yeah man you know I want to get like you and I want to get to where you are and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, listen, that guy, he shares his earnings reports. He's like, yo, I made $50,000 this month. And, you know, it's incredibly humbling when he when this guy publishes his earnings report for everyone to read it. And you're, you know, you're a regular dude on the grind. And you're like, wow, this dude just 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 dropped in with five grand this week alone. And what people don't realize is like, yeah, that five grand, he got it. But there's a lot that goes into it. Oh, he went through hell, man. Exactly. He went through hell to get that, man. And like, that's what I that's, mean. And that's the thing. Nobody ever appreciates the hustle until nope. they until they do it. And nope. I think and I think that's what happens. Like everybody wants to be down and they want to form a business, which is dope. Which is dope for America, you know, to, to keep pushing out um entrepreneurs. Um but then once they're faced with that first obstacle, it's like, yo, chill. That's it. <laughs> like this is hard, man. <laughs> like this is hard. I'm not doing it. Let me go back to, you know, working for Nike or whoever I want to work for. You know what I mean? And I think that's what it is. Like they, they forget about that hustle. John Lee Dumas is a hustler, man. Everybody yeah. that's been on our site, the reason we have them on our site is because they, they represent the ultimate hustler. Like well, they get down and dirty. Absolutely. And with and with that I, I wanna ask, you know, looking at that and, and seeing that type of, of success what what's a moment that validated for you uh you know you guys either collectively or or separate that validated that this that this is what you want to pursue that this is what this is it you know this is your bread and this is your bread and butter this is what you're good at and this is what you can grow from hmm. like you know you have that moment that one that one shiny moment that you go man. this is why i do it oh you know? man no, uh, you want to start yeah. Uh, okay. To me, it's different. Like, it's not even a, a business moment. Like, to me, the min the moment I knew that that it was working really well, besides people sending us like thanks and things like that, was um 
actually seeing my son like rocking a, a fat startup t-shirt and he came up to me and um it was at his school and he the teachers told you know the teacher asked me what do i do and my son came out and he goes oh this is james lopez representing the fat startup.com where we aim to show the correlations between hip-hop and business i was like oh snap that's funny. this is my six-year-old <laughs> <laughs> like this is my six-year-old pimping me out to his teacher you know telling his teacher yo this is this is james from the fat startup he that's doesn't awesome. know what the hell we're doing but he knows that we're that we're changing something. He knows that people out there like what we're doing. Yo, know, when I, I I'll never forget that moment. Like that was just dope as hell. That's I awesome. didn't even know about that, man. That's my first time hearing that, man. So yeah, that's man. fantastic. Cause yeah. It, it, you know, it brings a tear to my eye, man. Cause that's you know that's my little man, and for him to know what's going down at that level is like, oh mm-hmm. man, I need to keep going because now not only not only are the fans there for us, or not only is the support there. But now my family knows what's going down. I got a six-year-old knowing, knowing what's going down. I can't fail now. That's, that's it. That's exactly it. You know, yeah. I, the, the, I, mean, I, can, I can understand that. Yeah. I think, man, I, I didn't know if it was like an entrepreneurship in general or the fast startup. But for, for the fast startup, um, you know, just seeing the people, seeing the reactions and how excited people are for what you what we were doing. Um. You know, I've been, this is like my fourth startup, you know, so I've failed a, a good number of times more than I succeeded. No harm in that? You know, nothing harm in that. And my thing is, is that, you know, this is the first time where I really, you know, get people who are genuinely excited for what we're doing, but then also excited for the future. Um And... I never really got that before, you know, like at the, with the game site, with Coalition, you know, it's it's more so like a good game site. And you know how gamers are, man. They just like want to argue all day. So <laughs> they argue know, when I, they I feel like it. They argue when they feel like it and when it suits them. Like, <laughs> exactly. I, I, I can tell you Even right with, now, it, my audience it, hates each other. Exactly. They hate each other. They hate each other. It's E3 time. You know what's going on, yep. man. So. It's, it's, it's like, all right, even with the big sites, they don't do that. But it's just so it's so refreshing you know, to, to actually experience what a lot of people have all, I've always read, you know, I've always read stories about how people get these great experiences and great testimonials and things like that. It was never nothing I experienced myself. And to, to get that, um, it's kind of, it's kind of magical. And now I just want to take it to the next level and, and take over the world with it. There you go. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, a, a, another another dope moment besides the family thing was um, actually Alexis Ohinian. Like when we interviewed him, the the founder of Reddit, um, he stopped for a second and he said, "Yo, the fat startup should be a chapter in my book." When he said That's that, it was crazy. like, "Oh shit!" Like you know, this is a multi millionaire dude. You know, multi millionaire um, has built one of the dopest services out there, and he's saying that we should have been part of his book. That's on you know tremendous. live live on video like that's i i never expected anything like that you know throughout mm-hmm. my career i never expected to have a moment like that and that was pretty dope because after him other people said the same thing and it was like okay that's like, tremendous yeah so put us in the book then there you go that's <laughs> it it's like don't, don't, don't talk <laughs> about it be about it <laughs> <laughs> all right you well, know, but people like that like sometimes they'll say things like that and they do so much for us that you know we you forget even, about it, right? Yeah, you it's forget, thankless. Like, it's thankless. Yeah, like our, our first event was with Mick Boogie, you know, DJ formerly known as Mick Boogie. Now his name is Mick. Um, <laughs> super cool dude, you know, world, you know, global DJ, world renowned DJ. He did our first event, and after that, it was like, yo, like everybody else was pretty cool. Like everybody else was down to do one with us. And I was like, all right, this is dope. You know what I mean? Like having somebody of his caliber sit down with us give us that interview and then connect us to like maybe 10 other people in the next couple of weeks. Like that's insane. Like a lot of people say they're going to do it, but he did it. Like he hooked us up with karma loop. He hooked us up with a whole bunch of other people. And it's like, yo, that's not only is he a supporter, he's a friend, man. That's, like, that's what's up. And we didn't know him. We didn't know him like that. We all knew his music, but we didn't know him until, until, you know, we started sitting down with him and got this interview going. That's huge, man. To have somebody like that supporting you and then hooking you up with all his friends, man, that's crazy. Not too many people do that, as as you probably know. Oh, absolutely. Well, let's let let's 
let's let's look at you know we look at the bright side of the tracks we got to look at the dark side of the tracks how how you know what what hardships have you guys endured to get this to what to the point where it's been you know what's what's been the the toughest door that that's closed for you or the or the biggest adversity you faced building this brand well i mean i think the the toughest thing in the beginning is really um finding the audience you know and what i mean by that not saying not not saying that we never knew who the audience was but when we first started out it was more so you know we were we really wanted to do things in inner city neighborhoods and we still want to um and you know come into the realization that um we will have to become successful first before doing that because it was more so like it wasn't like a good business move to do it the way we intended to do it um so i think at first i mean there's tons more we can pull out and james is gonna name like one or two um but i think that was the very first one that we started to realize and that's that's the result of lean startup and when you're building a startup that's lean um you you build you measure you learn and that's something that we do. And as if you are a startup that's listening or someone who's going to build a startup, as you go through Lean Startup, and I suggest you do, um, you're going to be disappointed a lot, but you're not going to be defeated. So. Right. Yeah, I mean, for me, the hardest part was um, through, this, through this whole thing was really time management. Like, I think, uh, I think that's something that we all go through and we just keep continuing to the, uh, learn how to overcome the issues with time management. Like, I, you know, I, I have a son and then once we started getting some traction, I had another child. Like, it was like, all right, now when do you separate the time to work and, do, you know, and find the time to sleep and keep Oof. your health going and all of that? Like, that's, <laughs> that's still an ongoing battle for me. And, yeah. you, know, and you know, and for Anthony himself, like, we, we're both still struggling on figuring out, like, the, the best uses of our, of our time when, and that's hard, man. Like that's something that I don't know if I'll ever figure it out, but I'm, you know, I'm working towards it every single day. Yeah. I mean, to be honest, it's like, it just, it's, it, it comes down to like a diet. It was like one thing I've been able to do lately is just kind of like cut out a lot of stuff that I just don't do anymore. You know, like it just don't, some things don't like, I don't take every meeting, you know, like everybody wants to meet with us. And especially since the fat startup has, become a little you know a little bit more of a of a well-known brand in new york tons of people wants to meet and yep. as nice as we are like as much as we like to hear people out we just can't meet like this is this is impossible like we have to work we have to get stuff done and everybody wants us to do something and we just can't take on as many opportunities as much and i mean i shouldn't have to say this but you shouldn't be watching that much tv um, you should not be watching the news at all. Nope. Um, I don't do it. You know, podcast, you know, stuff like this. I love those. Like those that take, you know, I can listen to a podcast while I work because sometimes I might hear an idea. Matter of fact, I've heard an idea that has, you know, pushed the business forward many times. Yeah. Um, where just by listening to a podcast while I'm writing a blog post or listening to, you know, so those are good things to to do. Just it's just like a diet. We in a real diet, you eat what's gonna help you and make right. you better, right? And you eat little of it. You don't eat heavy, <laughs> right? So um, it's more so just like an information diet, a time diet. You know, just a little bit of what what's really working. And I think James is finding that. And and one thing James just mentioned, which is really important, is health, right? So you gotta make sure you're eating, exercising. Everything. One guy I'm going to mention, and then I'll, I'll cap it right there, is like James Altucher. He has something he called, he does called the daily practice, where there's like four different practices you could do every day. Okay. And, you know, it's mental, spiritual, emo, you know, like uh, emotional, and then um, physical. And you do these four things every day, and you become luckier, and it works. So I definitely tell people to just look that up. Okay. Well, I'm going to I'm going to give I'm going to give James and 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 you uh an answer for the enemy of time. Okay. And I and I, I, I here here's here's how I see it. I okay. I um you know and and this is going into real world, you know, I'll, I'll give I'll give you guys that and, and my listeners know it cuz I share my life with them. So, uh what I what I do is, 
you know, I, I'm, I raise my two sisters. They're both handicapped. My, one of my sisters has autism. My other sister has, uh, you know, mental retardation, a host of other issues. And, you know, when my mother passed, I became their guardian. So this was a 24-7 job. You know, you're 19 years old and you become insta-dad. Yeah. So I'm doing that. I'm working. I'm, you know, I'm learning all the ins and outs. I'm trying to juggle my relationship with my girlfriend who became my fiance, who became my wife. And I realized something along the way. And that's the fact that when you look at what is surrounding you, you got to take into account and take stock of what's going to give you value. Like what you were saying about not taking every meeting. You got to look at every meeting and say, what can I gain from it long term and short term? If it's something that's, you know, quote unquote, instant gratification, you do it because it's going to grow your product, your your yourself or whatever it is in the shortest amount of time possible with the least investment, that being time. If it's something that's going to be a slow burn, then you got to ask yourself, am I willing to commit to it? And that's how I end up doing. You know, that's that's how I do it. My my mantra is basically. Put in the time at the beginning of the day, the middle of the day, or the end of the day for yourself, and everything mm-hmm. else will fall into place. Like you have your, you know, you have your kids, and I, I see that, you know, I, I see the hashtags of, you know, presence over presence, mm-hmm. and that's exactly that's exactly it. You 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 have the answer right in front of you. It's exactly that. Just be a be a presence in their life, you know, whether it's directly or indirectly. And it'll enrich you to motivate you to make time for what you got to do. Yeah, now you right. I mean, one of the, one of the one of the one of the quotes that I, that I've always um, adhered to was, was one that actually um, Anthony gave me, and it wasn't even a quote; it was more like a statement. Like I remember one time he stopped me and he goes, "Yo, um, you know, things are getting crazy now. The business is growing. Right. Uh, you you can't take meetings in the city like that anymore. Like nope. they got to come to you." Yep, and that's it. That's exactly it. like. Okay. Like I, you know, I, I work a, a full time job and, um, you know, it's like I go to work, I work, um, you know, sometimes till eight, nine o'clock at night. I come home, you know, I have dinner with my wife. We watch some TV, whatever. Then it's in front of the computer for show prep or writing posts or editing video or whatever. And I give myself work hours. So I'll say from 11 to two, I'm going to work on show stuff. And then it's either lights out or maybe I'll play a game for an hour or two and that's it. And that's. That's how it's got to that's how it's got to be. You got to take, you know, priorities where you can. And not only that, you got to also take, uh, you know, pretty much stock of, of what's around you. Like exactly that. The meetings, the stuff that that steals your time away from you. And at the end of the day, once that's done, you're going to you're going to you're going to be better off for it. Yeah. I had a, res- uh, you know, I gained a lot of respect for you, man. I think you have a, a a great perspective on the world. And you just knowing how how much work you've been putting in um, since you were 19. Um, with your family, that's a uh, very, very, very respectable man, and you know I commend you for that. Yeah, you grew up, you, you grew up faster to. than me, man. You know, and <laughs> well, yeah, that's and, part of it, you know. Yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely something that's that's magical. And and one thing I would say, as well, is um, you you hit, you know, when James he uses like you always need that thing that's gonna keep you sane. So that's he it. has his kids, um, you have your family, and you also have video games. Um, I'm sort of the same thing. Like sometimes I do something really creative or I may play a game or something like that, whatever it is, something that just kind of takes me away from everything temporarily. Um, and I I don't know, like, I I don't know where I read this. I read something where it's like, when you wake up in the morning, don't even check email, just do something creative. That's it. Um, and I don't know where I read that at. But I started doing that occasionally. Like, I'm not going to lie. Like, sometimes when I wake up, yo, email inbox, you know. But other times, it's like, yo, you know what? Let me just not check the inbox for a good two hours and just do something else and then jump into the email and jump into the work right after that. And I've noticed, like, when I do that, I'm way more optimistic. I'm way more happier. I'm Mm -hmm. way more energized i'm way more it's just like it's just way more positivity like it's, it's a whole bunch of stuff that just comes with it so um yeah i think you know the earlier i wake up the better you know I, that way i can start you know i can just do creative stuff in the morning fun you know enjoy myself and then by the time it hits like 8 a.m or 10 a.m i could jump into you know everything else 
it, it, it's funny you, that, that, that you do it that way. I, you know, I, I stay up later because the way I see it is you sleep, I hustle. You know, yeah. for me, you know, that's how, that's how I see it. Like, like, like the world, like everybody at the end of the day, even though they're, everybody's your, your friend, your colleague, whatever, you're always in a competition, whether it's intentional or not intentional, you're competing every day of your life, whether it's against yourself or, or your peers, because at the end of the day, iron sharpens iron that, so, yeah. you know, it, and, and so, and, and I wanted to ask, you know, have you guys reached a point in doing this where not that you've hit bottom, but like where mentally you, you, you kind of, you were, you were, you were breaking. Like, have me, you had that? So, you know what? I know James has this, right? I know James has a, a, a answer for this. I know this for sure. Let me just comment on the other thing you said. Like, so the, the thing about the sleep, right? Um, I do not sleep. There you go. Good man. <laughs> I tell you that right now. Like, I'll tell you this right now, but I don't, but I don't wear that as a badge of honor. Right, right, right. You know what I mean? I More so that. just like, I think I need to sleep though, right? So the thing is, you're right though. While you sleep, I grind. But sleep is a, is, but listen to this. Sleep is a metaphor. Mm-hmm. Sleep is a metaphor. Sleep can mean while you party, I'm grinding. That's right. While you right. doing this, I'm grinding. That's While right. you doing that, I'm grinding. While you on Twitter talking about Jay Z and yep. Beyonce fighting in the elevator, <laughs> that's right. I'm grinding. Right. You know, so that's sleep to me. You know, right. ignorance. And, yeah, you're 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 overcoming ignorance with 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 you like sleep for had, takes a new meaning. Yeah, it takes a completely new meaning. Like yep. in the Forty Eight Laws of Power, or matter of fact, the Thirty Three Strategies of War. One of the first, one of the first um, laws of, of war, strategies of war, is self inflicted warfare. Right. That's right. And then one of the laws of power is actually um, crush an enemy totally. That's right. Right. But who is the enemy? Yep. Sometimes the it's enemy you. is yourself. It's you. Yep. Like you gotta crush yourself totally. Like and, and, and I think most people haven't mastered themselves and they just mm-hmm. and we talked about this earlier, like how people just doing everything and you can't save them and you know, like that's just how they is, man. Yep. And you know, I think we they're sleeping right. There are people sleeping right now. They're not literally sleeping. Right. Mentally sleeping, yeah. That, but, that's exactly know, they, it. They're doing a whole bunch of other things while we're here chopping up game and having this incredible mastermind right now. So it's, you know, we're, we're, we're growing while everybody else is shrinking. That's so. right. Yeah, and uh, on the burnout tip, I think, um, I think anybody that says they, they've never gotten close to burning out, I think they're probably not working hard enough or oh, they're just man. perfect. <laughs> or man. they're perfect, you know what I mean? Like they, they just know how to run game perfectly and there's not too many people that can do that. Yep, right? very few. So, um, so yeah, I think, uh, you know, there's been times where, I, where I've been on the brink of, of like shutting down. And during those times, we, you know, we encourage each other to just take a couple days man. and take a couple days and just chill with your fam or play video games. Like, do what you do. Right. You know, something completely away. And your, your mind can never be away. Like, even when I'm away, I'm oh, on yeah. my phone. <laughs> you know, I got my phone, I'm on Twitter. You know? yep. That's <laughs> that, It's horrible. <laughs> well, no, I, I, feel, I feel good hearing that. You know, I, he, I, I feel glad, you know, it, it, it brings a smile to my face hearing about the camaraderie of war. But in, in, when war in this case is the war to be successful, it's like I, you know, I got, I got married uh, November 11th and I said, uh, to my wife, I said, listen, if the year ends and I just don't feel fulfilled mentally to keep doing what I'm doing, I'm pulling the plug fully, pulling the plug, sight, show, everything. Just because, because, uh, you know, you start, you start taking stock. It's like, you, I got to pay for hosting fees. I got to pay for whatever goes into the show. I got to pay for equipment. I got to pay to go to these events, you know, and, and I'm just not getting the growth that I expected. But then I thought about it and I, and I was like, you know what? This is, this is a brisk jog for me and not a sprint. Wow. If I quit now, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to be one of the woulda, coulda, shouldas. So exactly. So, you know, we went, I, you know, I came back from my honeymoon and ki- I kind of got refocused. And like I said, I started applying different strategies, taking more stock of what's around me. And I stopped stressing outside circles like what i was saying about going to e3 or going to pax east or going here or going there i said to myself you know what i don't need i don't need to go there because i got to take time off from work i got to spend money to repurpose content that everybody's getting 
What I should do is focus on making my voice unique enough and original enough that people will come and seek out my content without me having to be there. Yep. And that's, you know, that's, that, that's where it goes. And I, I, like I said, I hit bottom. I hit bottom right before I got married. I was like, yep, I'm going to pull the plug. And my drive, a, a, a team of people that, that, that write, you know, and they're all close friends. Some of them are family. And I'm like, listen, I might pull the plug on this. And people are like, yo, man, I can't believe it. Da, 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 da. And I'm like, yeah, but you know, you're, you're on, you're on, you're on three quarters of the grind. I'm on the full grind. Yeah. You know, I, it, on it. you know, it's, it's like, it's, it's like, I, you know, I use a note three. It's like, by the time, if I've used, if I'm down to 30% of battery by the end of the day, that means I'm using the phone way too damn much. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and, and that's what I'm saying. Like, like when you hit bottom, you either get that moment of clarity to persevere or you find motivation, you know, like you find motivation in your kids or, or, or Anthony finds motivation in just using the tools that are around him in those bigger moments. And, and sometimes we need that, but I got to tell people, and that's why I asked that question that so it, it's not all fun and games, man. Some days, yeah. some days it's, it's hard shit. <laughs> some days you wake up and you go, yo, I hate this. Most of the time. That's you know, day. <laughs> exactly. You're like, yo, I hate this. Or I, or I hate that, I, that this isn't working. Or I hate that I got to do this. Or, you know, like nobody understands that. Except you, people that are that, like I said, are are are, are in that war. Then you remember because there's times like uh, I'm sure you know you you want to just like put your head down and go to sleep, and then you you might even lay down, lay down for a few minutes, and then you're like, yo, I can't even sleep, man. Yep. Like I gotta get back to work. That's it. <laughs> like it just doesn't happen. Like it just mm-hmm. it just can't. Like you just gotta grind, grind, and you know you touched upon the team, like, or you know all the stuff we're doing. Like that's probably one of the biggest lessons we had. Like. You, you need a team, man. Yep, you, need you need a good one. team. Like yep. our team is is there, you know. You that. need one, or you or you gotta farm out your work. You know, you gotta find certain things where you gotta spend a little money to make money. It's like, hey, I need this logo. I can't draw for mm. shit. <laughs> draw me this logo. I pay you. Hey, I need this mm. intro for video. I'm not that good at it. Boom, and then yeah. it improves your product, and and you you have more time to focus on other things. Yeah, it's still a team. Yep. I don't think I don't think it's um. I don't think that excludes it. Yeah. You know, every every business is different. And your team members like are it. just dead presidents at that point. That's all. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's like all. You, your money is your team. That's man. right. You, you, you elancing and old desking it out. That's you know it. I mean? And Fiverr in it. That's right. You know, as long as you got the process down and and they're and they're doing what they're supposed to do, then yeah, your 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 team is just as good as anybody else's at that point. As long as everybody is executing the way you need them to execute, then there's no issue. All right, so to, to to bring everything full circle, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you guys a that not a question that I'm sure you're gonna have fun with. If you could impart one one piece of wisdom, only one, on anybody who's contemplating going into entrepreneurship, trying to trying to chase their dream, trying to trying to really get to that next level of the hustle, what what would you suggest? Hmm. Well, I mean, I'll start. So the thing is, I've been listening to. Uh, this this um this meditation it was recommended by Scott Britton actually, and it's called the six phase step meditation. I listen to it almost every morning now, um and it's really dope. I'll send it to you. And yeah, James, definitely. You so I can put it in the show notes. Definitely. Um and one thing he talks about in the meditation is that people tend to overestimate what they can do in one year, and they underestimate what they can do in three. Mm. So when we goal set, when we start to say, oh, I want to do this, I want to do that, I want to do this, we start to give ourselves too much work in the beginning. And it goes back to a saying that I always say is like, think A to B, not A to Z. Yep. Um, take it one step at a time. Build it one step at a time. Don't rush. You know, look at the finish line. You know what it looks like, but know that. You know, it's going to take steps to get there. A, B, C, D, E, F. You're not going to skip any letters. You're not going to skip any steps. Piece by piece, you'll get to where you're supposed to go. And I'll just tell people to just be patient and wait it through. And it's going to be hard. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> it's going to be hard. But if you make it through, it'll be all worth it. Okay. I, I, could, I could live with that. I could dig that. James, what about you? Oh, I mean, for me, it's just you, you have to try. Like if you don't try to do what you really want to do in life, like you'll never know if you could, if you could have done it. Like I, I've seen so many people like um, 
like make it to like a later stage in their life and they still regret their lives. Mm-hmm. That, like, I, 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 yeah, like just don't be that. Like do whatever it takes to to not be that. You know, keep continuously um, build your movement. You know, make sure that your movement is always going forward. And um, focus. That's it. Try and focus. There you go. That's, that's my best advice for anybody because uh, I didn't think I could do it at first. And, you know, now that, I, that I'm doing this, like, I don't see no other way. I hear you. It's possible. There you go. All right. So with that said, um, you can find all the works of Anthony and James and the rest of the Fat Startup family at thefatstartup.com. Make sure you follow them on Twitter at the Fat Startup. Subscribe to the Fat Startup newsletter. I do. Every day you get you, you you'll get inspiration from the unlikeliest of places. An email don't cost you nothing. You know, take the time and subscribe. If you don't if you can't make it to the site, an email, you get an email every day. You know, stop looking for coupons to go to IKEA and start stepping your game up, folks. <laughs> we're, we're. Jordans will be there. There you go. <laughs> Definitely, man. And thank you for having us on, man. I really appreciate it. This is a great conversation and it turned into a great mastermind. I learned a lot you know about you and you know we had some great conversations so you know usually you know stuff you know conversations don't go like this all the time so i really appreciate you know having this having this time man it's really good man so i, I want to actually come back now let's talk games next time man. there you go <laughs> oh, 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 i knew that was coming soon. <laughs> there you go uh, well james and anthony thank you guys for taking us beyond the mic Word up. Thank you very much. You've just heard My Take Radio's Beyond the Mic with Anthony Frazier and James Lopez from The Fat Startup. To learn more about The Fat Startup, make sure to check out The Fat Startup, P H A T Startup dot com. As for us, you can listen to My Take Radio live every Thursday at 11 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Pacific by heading over to mtrlive.com or gfqlive.tv. For those that are interested in listening to a live audio only feed, you can go to Mixler, M-I-X-L-R dot com forward slash My Take Radio or, of course, good old Blog Talk Radio, which is blogtalkradio.com forward slash My Take Radio. If you want to get show archives, you can find them on MyTakeRadio.com, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio and iTunes. If you're getting the shows via iTunes, please take a moment and rate the show. We would really, really appreciate it. But As always, the best MTR experience is available via the My Take Radio app, which, of course, gave you exclusive access to this first uh, brand new 2014 episode of MTR Beyond the Mic. And as always, it gives you 96K stereo episodes of the shows, plus exclusive content available to app owners. You can get the official My Take Radio app via the Amazon Android Marketplace, iTunes, or the Windows Mobile Store. On behalf of myself and the rest of the MTR team, we'll see you guys real soon. As always, catch My Take Radio live Thursdays at 11 p.m. Thanks for listening.